<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode three of Hideout Rundown. This is the uh, series where yeah. uh, a bunch of us get in the voice channel and we listen to ten songs, uh, nine of which came out during the week, and the tenth of which also came out during the week. But it's it's recommended by the community today. Today we've yeah. got Aaron, and we have me, and we have Ouchdog, and we have Ruben. And um, special guest and musician, uh, and Monster Cat mix contest finalist Ben Lepper. You know, I really wasn't in the mix contest. He was, he was in Call of the Wild 300, though. That's got to count for something. Okay, so first up, we have more Kismet Flare featuring Mama Kismet. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was pretty good. The sound design was really like yeah. interesting. You know, boys, well, I've always wanted more Kismet to go like a more chill direction, and it, it sounds like exactly what I wanted it to sound like. It has yeah, all these it's... good sound design elements, but it's, it doesn't try as hard to be so heavy, and I really like. I, I I appreciate that. Yeah, and that's one of the things I was gonna mention is there's so much like little like ear candy in this song, like things that are just completely panned like left and right just lots of little sounds just mm -hmm. going around and they really make it interesting they do that with their trap sometimes but it doesn't always work for me sometimes it can be a bit too grating and or empty or it just sounds off to me but i think it really really works well with this kind of like clucky glitchy like softer stuff yeah i also I, yeah. I thought the kick was really bad like it was I, I too like distorted <laughs> and it felt like it was panned to the left a little bit and it just i feel like it would have worked a lot better with like a <clears throat> a more normal side like a less distorted more punchy kick i don't know i just don't like those kind of kicks in general i mean personally it took me like i i also didn't think that the kick was like too fitting it was a little bit jarring compared to like the rest of the instrumental but um like around halfway through the song i decided like instead of just thinking it it was annoying i thought it was like more of just a cool little addition and then by by the time the second drop rolled around i was pretty sold on the song just because like uh the flow was really good and the sound design is just like not something i've ever heard before and uh more kismet like really took their sound design from you know other releases i've heard uh from them on never say die and translated it to a style that i never thought you know would have worked well and you know they managed to make it sound really really cool i i do agree in a bit of a similar way about the kick originally i was like that that's kind of loud but it, it made sense as the song went on so like the kick definitely like added something that was needed i i think it just at the beginning it was just like boom 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 and i was like what what, what is what is going on but it, but it made sense as the song went on and mm -hmm. Huge fan of the second drop as well. The first drop was cool. Second drop was absolutely like mind blowing with how yeah. how they made a quick yeah. little switch up with the with the rhythm, and uh, it really worked. And more great person. I've known them for uh, for a few years now, and it's great to see them blowing up like this. Uh, I would give yeah. it like a high seven. Yeah, I'm uh, feeling that too. <clears throat> I'm feeling an eight. Maybe 8.5. I'll stick with 8 for now. I'll go 7.5. I'm thinking flat 7. Fair enough. Alright, next up, we've got an artist we all love. Um, it's called Fire, featuring Caitlyn Scarlet by Just a Jet. That was the song. That is a song that exists. I, I'm not sure I, I agree with the title. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me this was not worthy of like three fire emojis if you were to post this somewhere? Um, I'd say maybe like one and a half fire emojis. It wasn't bad. I, so I thought the house, house drop was pretty cool. Yeah. Vocals and build up were really good. The drop was a yeah. bit underwhelming. But I don't like the vocal chops really at all. Me neither. Ooh, yeah. The vocals were definitely the highlight of this song for me. And to the lyrics to some extent, because I don't know, it was, the singer was really giving it their all there. Yeah, and I thought there she, she was very good. Yeah, there wasn't much else going on beyond the vocals. Like there was, you had your, your trap beat, and then you had your house beat, and then you had a flute, and then that's it. 
and then the song I mean, ended. Yeah. It literally just abruptly ended. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't not expecting that ending. It just kind of faded out, and I was like, oh, what? I mean, the, the drops were like pretty blatantly to me just like a, a lesser like a less complex version of some of the stuff that he did on Urko like there was a lot of the same like yeah bass and a lot of the same instrumentation but yeah. uh what this track actually had I think like what it had over Urka is like what as you guys were saying the vocals and also there were a couple of sections in in like the midsection and in the intro where I was hearing like um you know these little guitar plucks and and um like I thought that the strings were done really well. Like I was just kind of hearing that, and um, you know, it was it was you know I was feeling it was a little blissful. I thought uh, in those moments when you know it wasn't trying to be like a trap banger or like a you yeah. know a house beat or whatever. Th like, those are the like parts that stood out the most to me. If I'm gonna listen to this song, like if I want to hear a song like this, I'm just gonna listen to Iris in the Dark because that song has McCall, and I think McCall's vocals, even though the vocals of the oh. song are pretty good, I think McCall's vocals are like incredible on Iris in the Dark. I, well, you're you're a big Luminism fan. So I love that, Luminism. So that makes yeah. sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I felt yeah. I felt a lot of the same atmosphere as the RPP on this song. Mm -hmm. I, I can agree yeah. with that, but I'm personally, if I want to listen to a song with that atmosphere, I'm just going to go back to Erica because the yeah. song on there is way more interesting than what I just listened to. Just yeah. again, talented, knows what he's doing, was not his best song. Yeah. I agree. That title I mean, goes it, to Put Your Hands Up Original Mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, about the, the atmosphere. This song did have some cool atmosphere, but like I think about almost all of the other songs on Urka, they have this like really haunting undertone to them that's so unique i don't really hear that in yeah. any music the title track especially. especially Urka, yeah it has these like creepy like and like vocals and weird ambient noises and then it has a lot of accidental notes so it's going out of key a little very intentionally and it just it, it makes it very like unsettling and i think it's that's such an interesting thing to explore and i guess the song did have good atmosphere but it, you know it's again if i want to hear good atmosphere i'll just listen to urka i don't really have much reason to come back to this apart from the vocals so yeah feeling uh i think at a four and a half maybe a five on this one i'm feeling like I'm a, probably a, a five and a half i feel like a good high six i'd, I'd give it a six as well i give it a six all right there we go we're real spread out right. with these first two songs yeah, yeah, real controversial. All over the all place. Over the place. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Next one is some is a song I'm really excited about. I've been listening to this song all weekend. This one is yes. um Young Thug or not Young Thug. Young, 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 young Thug. Young, young, young. Young. <laughs> <laughs> this next song is Young Bay, Wiz Khalifa, Baby No Money, and Max with Bad Boy. That's how that's pronounced. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> Banger City. Such a that banger. Good. That's yeah. really good. It's so much. I didn't want it to end. It started fading away and I was like, wait, what? It's no. so fun. I love the vocals. Dude, everybody does so well. Dude, when Wiz Khalifa came in, oh, I was head bobbing hard. Like, you that, were LJ. I was LJ. You were hard, LJ. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> the production went like perfect with his fucking flow, dude. I love that song. Yeah, I know. Wiz Khalifa needs to like pull a Bruno Mars and just go straight to like funk <laughs> music. I feel like every artist Absolutely. needs to do that. Absolutely. He has a really good voice for it. Yeah, that's true. He fit very well. He didn't feel jarring. Like when I read the when I read the names on this song, I was like Wiz Khalifa. But then came in the song and he totally fit and he, he yeah it, it's up, super natural like, yeah definitely it didn't feel like we're gonna throw in this guy because he's like famous you know what i mean it yeah. felt like he very much so fit the track all of the singers were good i'm a huge fan of uh, max I, he's not really that prominent in this song but he's a great vocalist yeah, he, yeah, he's really good. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm a big yeah. Young Bay fan. He's really good. His remix of Goodbyes by The Knox is incredible. It's one of my favorite Future Funk songs ever. Definitely, uh, that was my introduction to Young Bay, actually. I had heard the name, I'd never listened to anything. Uh, I think after this, I'm going to go check out the rest of their discography. That was that was way better than I expected. Yeah, so that's good. that's yeah. I'd say it's probably Young Bay's second best song after the Goodbyes remix. Uh, 
I yeah, I have not heard any Young Bay. I don't think he's a name I always hear, but I've never really listened to. Has anyone else like Aaron Geom? Have you guys heard much of him before? I've heard I've heard a few K, uh, a few songs that like Caitlin suggested, but I've never been a huge a huge as much as a fan of as I was of that. That was very good. That's easily my my favorite Young Bay song that I've heard so far. Yeah, um, I I heard the one Young I think the two Young Bay songs that Caitlin uh, put in for Divide Out back when that was a thing. Oh, um, that's right, I heard those. Yeah, it, it's it's not really a style of music that I'm like you know like I. I, yeah. I think I've been con I've been conditioned over the years to like, you know, I'm addicted to like the dopamine release of a drop, and like, it, it it the payoff on like future funk and music in that vein isn't really as satisfying to me. But the pr the production on this was just like pristine to an extent that like <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't hear in 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 the other young bass songs that I've heard. Like I I honestly wasn't like too crazy about it, but it was so solid. Um, and like it's definitely the the best young bass song or my favorite young bass song that i've heard so far it's hard to like hate this song like i can't see anyone yeah it, it's just doing passion. it's just doing its thing and like yeah it's being, so being really good at what it does catchy literally the same people who hate this song are the same people who like don't like birthday parties just because they didn't get <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys should listen to the goodbyes remix because that i like there's a lot of similarities between that and uh and this so i feel like if you guys like this you'd like that God, sounds sounds good. good to know. I would give this a solid seven out of ten, probably. I'm gonna go like high eight. Ooh. I'm probably gonna go like high seven and a half, low eight around there. Yeah, I'd go like mid seven, seven point five. I'm gonna go with an eight. Right. Very yeah. good, good song. Very, good, very yeah, positive. good song. All right, All right next one. Next, next one is, is straight <laughs> up a banger, city oh, boys. This is I gonna know what be it, on I know what it is. Monster Cat Best of 2020. Number one, three thousand votes ahead of everything else. This is Jackknife by Riot. <laughs> it's not oh, no. <laughs> Banger City. <sighs> See that Riot is continuing to use the uh, classic hit an anvil with a hammer snare. <laughs> Uh, they turned it down snare. about 20 decibels in this song. Well, the <laughs> thing is, I think that snare works well most of the time. <laughs> this is being the exception. Yeah, I it agree. It really not sound good in this song. I don't mm -hmm. know. Usually it fits. It didn't fit here at all. Yeah, normally ride snares are really like impactful and hit super hard. And mm -hmm. this was just like, okay, yeah, it's this. I'm this sound starting to. Yeah, they're just starting to get to me. Yeah. It, it sounded like, like a flop. Yeah. It sounded oh, like a flop snare, and then they just decided to throw the metallic effect on it, and it didn't work for me whatsoever. Exactly. Yeah, I think this was a cut above like a lot of the stuff that was re really? released on Dog. Well, because like Dogma Resistance yeah. had so much of like the story building garbage. Like yeah, that stuff, I don't like that those stuff those is like songs, garbage in Dogma. I think like, Iwa and like that. Overkill just bang really hard. I mean, and there I there is some obviously Overkill. Overkill is a banger, and obviously there are like some production like problems in this song. But like the fact that yeah. like it, it was just a mindless banger. I mean, yeah. that's something that a lot of songs on Dogma Resistance I thought were just like so obnoxious with the story, like the mob, the mob. Like, and... Yeah, Overture Night, whatever that was. Yeah, like, I mean like that. Like, why put that? I don't get it. Like, it, it, like really... five of those songs is dedicated to story building. Like, yeah. Like, and they prioritize that more so than like the song actually being fun to listen to. This song, yeah. like, it wasn't yeah. great, but, like, it was just a lot of fun to listen to, and, like, it was fun to see what would come next. There were, like, four drops in that song. You know, yeah. I didn't I didn't like every drop. I only liked, like, that half of them. That carnival drop was abhorrent. Yeah, there that was, was, there was so some bad. not good. Can that trend just die, please? Like, it's I, It has! It died in, like, 2017. It died, like, three years ago. I don't know why people still put carnival drops in their songs. I, I, didn't, but, I don't even hate... Like, I love Dogma Resistance, right? I'm a sucker for, like, the mob and, like, really, really just, like, mindless bro step when it's actually done well. But this just felt like, it just felt like a toss, toss out song from Dogma Resistance. It, it definitely It just did. felt okay, like Okay, that, that I agree with, yeah. 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 And yeah, I'm... I can agree with, with Aaron in that, you know, it's kind of good to have a non-storytelling thing from Riot. 
But when it comes to Riot, like, what separated their stuff for me was the storytelling. Take that away, and it's just more dubstep and a sea of dubstep. Like, it's well made. It, it's obvious that they know what they're doing, but at the same time, I'm like, I kind of like the storytelling because it, it kind of separates them from, like, every artist on Disciple or every artist on What's It Called. So, I'll I probably mean, disagree with that. Yeah. I think yeah. Riot dubstep, like, without the storytelling, would still be really unique from, yeah, like, it, the yeah. stuff that's getting put out on, like, Disciple. Yeah. I think right, Riot's yeah, just sound design and actual production is really, like, interesting Good. a lot of the time. Uh, this song, like, is so fun and it's all over the place. It is. It's all over the place. There's so many different bases and stuff happening and it goes so fast and I'm you kind of compared it to like other dubstep artists and I'm like, well, a lot of other dubstep that I hear, like mainly like Disciple NSD stuff is very standard. There's like a very yeah. simple flow set up and it just repeats. This song, say what you want about it, it had like 80 different bases and whether you like that or not, whether you think that makes it coat like fun or just a mess it's there and it's unique yeah i didn't think it was i didn't think it was a mess at all and I, yeah i guess comparing it to disciple was a bad move but it still stands i just i like the storytelling and yeah. with that said very good for dubstep like it is it is definitely a good dubstep song i just i don't like it as much as i do dog Moses. yeah i there were times like what aaron said where i was like okay this is a little grading specifically that vocal chop that ended all the drops. I was like, yeah, oh, I didn't like that. that. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. And that was like the slower, like the tempo automated yeah. down as like the vocal chop went. Yeah. That just sounded like, okay, what are you doing? I mean, well, it, it's unique. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give yeah, it that. I feel like it should have sounded better if it stuck to the 150. Well, I don't know. I think, yeah, it goes all over the place and there are some parts that aren't that good, but I respect it for just, they, they cut the storytelling, they're like, we're just gonna make a fun song that goes all over the place. And I can see a lot of people enjoying this, specifically like people who like Riot already, because it really just does go everywhere. And it, it would give you everything you want, whether or not you didn't want the carnival drop, it's in the song, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, I'll go with um, a decent six. I'm gonna say like three and a half. Whoa. I don't like it. Fair enough. I, are well, you surprised? No. Actually, no, not no. at all. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I'll give it six point five. I'm also thinking like a middle six point five. Thinking a six here. Who would have thought that we would have had the most interesting discussion so far over Riot Jackknife? <laughs> Jackknife. Me, it's Banger City. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. All right, next up is um an artist that you might know you might not know i personally love this artist um this is hope by circuit hour <laughs> Oh, oh my god oh, that people was so are gonna good. hate me people are gonna hate me. <laughs> oh boy we're, um, yeah, we're gonna have a J. Coach curse kind of right curse I moment. I think it's four oh, one again. <laughs> I'm so glad I get to be a part of it. Oh, no. <laughs> no, did not like this song. Circuit Hour, Circuit Hour is really like making a style for themselves, and I really enjoy it. Like um, this, I think this is part of a broader like album or EP, and it's gonna sound so good put together. I think Love is on this thing too. Oh man, I'm excited. Like ever since Fear, they've been on such a high streak and it's so obvious. They have such like a recognizable sound. And I really like that about yeah. them. Yeah. I haven't yeah. heard too much solo circuit hour, but I've heard uh their stuff on all on, on lighter albums. And I've heard Radio Cal Calisthenics every say that song. And I thought that song was actually like pretty good. I I like that song a fair amount. But I thought this was all over the place. I was, the sound design was really grating, especially that one part where it's this really like high screechy synth, and I just thought that was yeah. really kind of grating. That's and that's the best part though. Like that's <laughs> yeah. It's I really hate good. sounds like that. To me, that's like a lot of the charm of songs like Radio Calisthenics and this is that like you you like completely don't understand what's happening, but like yeah. I could still I could still just sit back and like sort of let the sound like 
in and you know like sometimes you i just kind of have to stop like thinking about it and then it just yeah. sounds good to me i don't know why it's just no, like a, a mental when I thing. A rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> you have to lose <laughs> all sort of thinking about music to enjoy rhythm they have these fluttery synths and arps that just go from side to side in your ears and it's yeah really, like, like aaron said it's just like a it's like a sensory experience it's a point where you can't like comprehend it sometimes because there's so much stuff going on that you just kind of sit back and you just listen to it and that's what i love them for i don't know other artists who can really pull it off to that extent they have such a distinct style and i just i love this song i thought it was very good i yeah, yeah. i can i can agree with that i i think circuit hours stuff mostly is just lots and lots of stuff but somehow it's not too messy like it's a little messy but that's fine that's like you know it's like say a, a room it's it doesn't really feel natural if it's perfectly clean all the time like that was the worst analogy but you know <laughs> you know in a way it kind of makes sense like clean is is boring once in a while like sometimes you just want this lead to it's it's part of the charm yeah, it'll How just modulate itself it over and over, time. like, pitch-wise, or you just want the scene to go pan left, right, left, right, left, right. And, I mean, it can be a bit jarring at times. Like, in this song, I found myself, like, I think I texted once, like, is it just me, is, or is it Discord, or is this like, this part, like, kind of stuttery? But, I mean, like, it, it, while it is jarring from time to time, it, it, it works, mostly, and... Mm -hmm. I gotta give a lot of props to Circuit Hour. Would also like to say, if you were following Circuit Hour on Twitter, please find their new account, because they got banned for some reason. Oh, what the... Huh. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> it's it's like, it's one of those songs when, like, I, I feel like I don't have the proper credentials, like, in terms of musical knowledge to even, like, <laughs> yeah. analyze it properly. Like, because I'm sure, like, a lot of the choices here were made, like, for a reason, but the song, you know, even, even as someone who really enjoys, like, overly complex sound designy like music that you know a lot of people would find to be messy even though i'm like kind of biased to enjoy that kind of music like i'm sure that a lot of those choices were intentional it's just like not something that i have the musical knowledge like to understand but still i can acknowledge that it's you know it's just something that i really enjoy personally like uh. this is one of those songs that's like going to be really polarizing just depending on your tastes and like what kind of music you're you like uh i'd give this I'm gonna say 8.5 out of 10. Wow. I'm doing like a decent 7. I'm gonna say like 4.5. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say 8.5. Uh, right. Very well made, I can respect it, but I don't really see myself listening to it that much. I'm gonna give it a 6. That's fair. Okay. Oh, right. I'm so ready for the next song. Next oh. song. <laughs> Let's just next move on are, like, as are, fast as we yeah, can. Yeah, give it, all, give it a 10. Our Let's take a 12 hour break. Alright, next one. Uh, this is the boss fight remix of Sith. Dude, these three names got me a, a, a whiplash. System you Overload got your face based on? by Snails and Company featuring Virus like, Syndicate. I feel like oh, the yeah. most generic dubstep title of all time is System Overload. What a mega collab this is. Oh god. Dream collab. <laughs> So is it song oh. of the year? What do we think? Is it gonna end? Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> That's what I was asking the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> From the second second of it. Oh my I, uh, god. Where do we start with this one? I, I don't know where to start. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let... Say... That one's not that bad for boss fight song. Not as bad as I was Are you? Are you? Are you tripping, Ruben? Are, are you? Are you? Are you high? Are you stupid or dumb? It wasn't. It wasn't. I, I love how like I impulsively started like going hard after Ruben for saying that. <laughs> like I couldn't even. I had to like hold myself back from just saying like, "Are you dumb?" <laughs> oh jeez. Wow. It's, it's not a good song, but it's not as bad as I was expecting it to be. But... I don't know. It's uh, maybe every I'm boss fight dubstep song is the exact same. I, I like well, a lot of it I, I, sounds I the exact same. I I, I kind of disagree because a lot of his monster cat, like a lot of his dubstep is on monster cat is so muddy and like 
unimpassable. <laughs> like, I'm thinking like beat down. Like, that song is <laughs> the least. Feels better go off. Feel me triggered. So... Beat down this sounds song... like my dog barking. You guys are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no matter, no matter what you think of the song, like at least the bases in this song, or some of them, had some grit to them, and they had some. Impact, they weren't all watered That's down. That's the standard we're holding dubstep artists to. <laughs> no, at least There's it bass wasn't in the song. watered down. <laughs> it wasn't as. I'm not saying it's good, I'm just saying it's not as bad as a lot of other bosses. Yeah, I might pose this. This is better than Next Wave, the first boss fight in Virus Syndicate, the time those worlds have crossed. <laughs> this is better than that. Better yeah. than Sovereign, I'll give them that. Sovereign I think is Sovereign's is. Sovereign's is best dubstep song. I feel no! like that's the only one that's right. mixed you, you by like an adult. <laughs> mixed by an adult? Mixed by a human being? What are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, listen. I got, I got a guilty, I got a guilty pleasure for um, boss fight dubstep. Evil inside, amazing. Uh, oh, beat like down, beat down, and sovereign, amazing. Um, but this, but this just does everything wrong. The the drop is so screeching. I hate that like reggae make it bun them. <laughs> yeah, fucking, again, no, nitro no, no. Yeah. piano. I, nitro I, fun I, addicted vibes I in that song. I don't. There, it is a very rare occurrence where I actually like that in a song. And uh, yeah. the drops are just oh, not up to standard. They don't go hard at all. Like there's just no impact. For me. I also I want to talk about the uh, the vocal processing on the Virus Syndicate vocals. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Yeah, he octave layered vocoders. I don't. What was that? It, it wasn't. Know. It wasn't good, is what it was. It's like snails, I'm sorry. Snails has sorry. like bases that sound like vomit. Boss fight puts a vocal <laughs> a vocal edit on it that just makes Virus Syndicate <laughs> yeah. feel. Sound like he's vomiting he got the, the entire <laughs> on the processing chain and he put it on the vocals. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I know, I know boss ground. fight. <laughs> I know boss fight can process vocals well, so I, I don't know what happened there. So I'll give him a pass. But rest of it was not for me in the slightest. Yeah. yeah no, uh, I think any, anything from the Snails World of Slime remix pack is <laughs> not going to be my favorite song ever. <laughs> But it honestly, the, the effin' remix on this package is not bad. The, um, it, I, like, it was not bad. Well, if he says it's not bad, it's probably pretty day. good then. It's not good. <laughs> yeah, but it's like hard. a five. That's how I feel about this song. The second drop, honestly, kind of went off. All right, guys, you Dude, but like, when the, first, when the first drop is bad, the song is over. Like, I'm never gonna listen to it again if the first drop oh. is bad. Yeah, I'm never. I'm not listening to the song again. Don't get me wrong, but okay, it's not yeah. as bad as I was expecting, and I think it, it deserves a hair more credit. Hey, this is exactly what I was expecting. <laughs> Besides the vocals, the vocals caught me off guard. Oh, oh yeah. I just want to talk briefly. One more thing: that reggae guitar. Oh, I noticed stop. that. Please that's just stop with reggae guitar. That's a that is sort of a banger when it has the when, when it has yeah, the nitro fun addicted guitar. reggae piano. And it's like, oh. dun, dun, dun. oh, that's how you know the song is good. I've, I've heard one song that has done that really, really well, and that was a Skrillex song. So I think it's, I think it's kind of difficult to make that work. <clears throat> I'm feeling, I'm feeling like a, a three, a clean three. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say three too. I'll say, oh. I'll give it a five. Uh, I'll give that one a three. Okay, okay. next one, a fire. Oh, gonna miss Hoopra. A fire debut coming out of Vietnam. Um, I think this is, I think it's Hoprox, how you say it, or Horoprox. Horoprox? Uh, this is Horror pox, like new... chicken pox and horror. Combined. That's so this funny, is, Ruby. This is New World, shut up. This He's... is New World by Rogue, from, I wish it was by Rogue. This is New World by Horoprox featuring Rogue. Consider me pleasantly surprised. I'm I'm so unimpressed. It's not even funny. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think. Well, it's no secret. Uh, Monster Cat's been signing a lot of like Eastern artists lately, and it feels a little cynical sometimes because, to me, it it feels like they're not signing some of these guys for their talent. It feels like they're signing them more as like a a check on the to list, finish. you know. Yeah. I mean, 
I mean, racist. What else is I mean, so racist. Well, yeah, and it's also interesting because I did some research in the Hope Rocks before this release came out because I like I have no idea who this is. So I looked him up. Apparently, this guy's like the marshmallow of Vietnam. He fucking <laughs> sounds like it. <laughs> no, no, but like size wise, like he's huge. That's kind in of Vietnam. That's yeah. kind of offensive. You're supposed to call him <laughs> Big Bones. <laughs> Alright, Ruben, that's a bad joke, brother. <laughs> Ruben really going crazy today. So I'm so rails. far off the rails, yeah. I'm I'm so on a, dude, the melody literally just feels like randomly placed notes. It's it like works. the it's messiest coherent. thing it was, I've it was, ever it seen. Was it was fully coherent. And yeah, it was it coherent. coherent. I mean the drop bad. the drop is like so unimpressive it hurts. Maybe if it had a good melody, I would care about this song. It does have a good melody. What and is the your drum, problem with the melody? It sounds like nothing. I I have neutral face emoji when I listen to it. Alright, my my take is that this song has everything. I mean, it has rogue vocals, which are good. <laughs> it has it has like a nice, you know, triumphant, like anthemic vibe. Which, you know, it's it's a good thing in drum and bass. It's like, it kind of makes it hype when, you know, there's nothing really else about the song that's innately hype besides, like, the melody and, like, all the horns going on. Except, like, so many other drum and bass songs, this song has been made, like, 4,000 times before. And, like, there's literally no reason why this song has to be released, like, again. I don't know. I just, I guess, like... Yeah. There's nothing I'm, unique about this song, like that makes it stand out from the 200 million other drum and bass songs that like get uploaded to Liquidity like every week. So, like that's you know it's it's like a good song and like I enjoy listening to it. But you know, thing thing with this song is like yeah, there's nothing inherently too too wrong with it besides the snare mixing in the first drop. The snare mixing was uh, couldn't really hear the snare, but other than that, like. There wasn't too too much wrong with it. It was just an inoffensive future based song. And uh Yeah, I that's really all I gotta say about it. Aaron said this song's been made before a few times and I mean good for Hope Prox to get himself like out there in the Western audience, because I mean he's huge in the eastern part of the world. I'd never heard of him before, so now people over here kinda know about him, so I guess good on him and I guess we'll see what else he can bring. Honest to God forgot Rogers on this song. <laughs> yeah, okay, so listen, I I don't, besides like the Catalyst EP, I don't hate like a single Rogue song on the label. And um, that's still true if you if you don't count this as a Rogue song. Like Rogue this, vocals- This is not a Rogue song. Yeah, Rogue no. vocals, always good. But like, especially in this song, they're so forgettable, man. Like, I guess they're endemic. But, like, there's nothing to, like, latch onto in the vocals. It's, like, the most generic, bland, like, yeah. lo lyrical content I've ever heard in my life. I don't know. I've never... I'm not too huge on rogue vocals recently, in all honesty. I think... I don't know. Sometimes recently he's been going heavy on the autotune, and it's a stylistic choice, but I just don't really enjoy it. It doesn't sound that good to me. He's good in this song, though. I didn't really notice it too bad. Yeah, he's fine. He doesn't yeah. sound bad in this song. I just literally oh. forgot about the vocals in the song. I was so focused on how, like, much I hate the melody in the drops. It's, I, it song makes sense. Is literally I don't know. Just bags, generic cereal. True. I, I still have a theory about how those vocals came around. This this applies to play it cool as well. Like, they, they're obviously looking for their artists, and then they send over a bunch of demos, like, you know, this is how it works. And then I think they find vocalists that they think would work. So I think what happened here is that Monster Cat team probably reached out to Rogue, like, hey, we have a song that needs vocals, would you be down? So I, I, I guess that's how that works. Something that's, play, so, yeah. something that's so good about uh, Rogue songs as of recently, like um move me in ocean oceans especially like his vocals lead into the drop so well and his vocals are still yeah. in the drop and like his vocals carry the melody out of the drop and in the drop and that's how you can tell it's it's a well-made rogue song yeah I just don't get that here at all i think i've said all i need no, to say no i'm feeling like uh, a like a five six I'm going i'll with, say six i'm going like a three i want a five Hell. 
absolutely incoherent melody. It doesn't make any sense. We're getting flagged now. Hope you're happy. It doesn't make any sense. All right, the oh, next yeah, song. You're talking about. Next song, uh, I think I'm going to like this a bit more. This is Better by Snare Skin featuring oh, Amber Goma. <laughs> That was That's cool. Good. Okay. Snare skin. Dude, yep. every time you hear me listen to a Future Bass song, you hear me complain about the percussion. What I really mean by that is I wish this percussion sounded like Snare Skin's percussion because he, he, this is his, like his best trait. His kicks and his snares are so punchy and so good. That like That's the defining characteristic of his music for me, is his drums. Yeah, that was definitely a really, really good kick drum he used there. Um, yeah. I like I respect Stairskin's production so much because I feel I feel the same way as I do with um, Mad for You. Love the production. Drops are kind of underwhelming. Not gonna lie. <sighs> Mad for You is not about the Mad for You is a masterpiece. I think Mad for You is the best debut the label Monster has ever seen. One of my probably in my top twenty songs on the label. Just the, the chords and the, the vocals are so good. The, it really sells me because it, he does like a, some jazzy, like Rhodes chords in that one bridge. And oh my God, I love Matt for you. And Smoke is really good too. Snareskin's a very good artist, but I was kind of disappointed by this EP that he put out because I, I don't like Snareskin's kind of hit or miss for me. But he, when he hits, he really hits. And I just, this EP was not really the hit. I just wish, I just wish he would try to push, push some boundaries. Like, That's I, true. I, I really respect his production and what he does. And if he, if he just stayed like this, I would respect it. I would still listen and be like, this is a pretty good song. But I feel like I would like his stuff a lot more if it wasn't just straightforward future bass. Yeah, that's why I like Smoke so much, because I've never heard a song that's, that sounds exactly like Smoke. A couple things I want to say about this one is that one, uh, was not the biggest fan of the vocals. Uh, yeah. Vocals were, were not to my taste. Uh, second of all, though, right at the beginning of both of the drops, there was a really, really cool, like, all I can think about is a marching band, but like that kind of fill, like a little snare fill, a little snare roll, like that, that was really well placed and in, I, I really did like that. Rest of it was you know, pretty cool, like future bassy stuff. Like I, I would say, Snareskin again, definitely very good producer. Definitely not, I'd say one of his better songs, like you guys have already said. But it's definitely good. Like I, I can say that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what stood out to me the most about the song is that like there was a, there was very good control over like these certain sections that were just like very punchy and like clean like like in the drop but there were also some moments when it was like dreamy there were just like these loose synths that were like kind of like kind of filling this filling my ears in a way um and like there were moments when you know it just switched between like really punchy and really like dreamy effortlessly and not a lot of future bass songs pull that off a lot of them try um, but snare skin is really good. Like, obviously I agree with Geom, it doesn't really push any boundaries, but just like what it's trying to do, it, it accomplishes pretty well, I would say. All right. What are we feeling? Um, uh, I'm gonna go like a clean seven. I want to say like a clean six and a half. Feel like seven on this. Yeah. I'm also going seven. All right. Next one coming out is from inspected. This is the, the oh, Phasmid boy. by Refrack. Oh, oh man, another huh. one of these songs. That had some really, really interesting textures, and it was kind of pretty, actually. Sure. Yeah. That's how I feel about every inspected release, and I never listen to any of them again. And I always give them all sixes. And there's another on the list. Ooh. Um. Yeah. It's I so wish. Boring. I. I really. I really respect it. I like. Like Ben said, I like a lot of the textures. I like. Uh, like the production is pretty flawless. My only my only problem with the song is that I wish it like focused more on the musicality. 
I wish yep. it had... That's my problem with every one of these songs. I wish it the had music like, is so uninteresting. I wish it had like a melody. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that's something I look forward to in songs when there's no like vocals is a melody and there's none of that. It sounds like an echo song, but without like yeah. a melody. It's yeah, a sound kept... design showcase and a texture showcase. And I, it's I kept... good at doing that, but it's not a good song. Yeah, I kept waiting for it to like turn into something else and it never did. Yeah. All right, I, I mean... I'm, I'm just gonna say like, this is not a good refract song. Like he, like I agree with actually what a lot of you guys said. I mean, this is the song that like, I thought I would like the most, um, but like I, I was I was also like waiting for it to go somewhere and it never did. But there were a lot of moments when like the sound, like the sound design just like tickled my ears in, in just the right way. Um, and like that, that's kind of the reason why I listen to these songs. But I mean, Refrack has always been a hit or miss artist in terms of like, you know, this this kind of music, like sound design -y music. And this is not one of his best. That's just what I'll say. I just feel like I have no reason to ever listen to any songs like these because there's nothing to like, there's nothing that latches on to you like that you, that sticks with you in my my opinion of the, of like this type of inspected upscale experimental, this whole, that whole scene. It's just never, I've never liked it. Yeah, it's, it's really not a good sign because now I'm just having a hard time remembering what I just listened to. Exactly. Which, kind of unfortunate to say because i remember it being like very very well made it's just like there's no sauce and i need some sauce yeah like if you if you listen to it for about 30 seconds you get the gist of the song that's all i'm feeling i'm feeling like a six yeah all these songs get sixes for me gets a six for me eight all right wow shock value all right next one is uh is our our final song it's uh, a community recommendation coming at us from lucas josh and non this is william crooks with easy and nothing makes sense it's all going wrong okay <laughs> this is gonna be a controversial one i didn't hate it yikes i didn't hate it at all this what? is the only thing i've heard from him so, let, me, same. let me just share with you all my William Crooks vocal tier list. All right, we got A tier, anything with harmonization. B tier, the high pitched. Then let's just jump right all the way down to F tier and put the scream vocals there. Did not work at all. I, I, I think I think this kind of had everything. I think this kind of had like the the yell vocals. I think it had the high pitched, and I think it had the harmonization, which is probably why I like it so much. <laughs> Yeah, the harmonization was really good. I like that a lot. Reminded oh, me yeah. of that like knapsack kind of style. Yeah. Harmonization was great, but I I could not take those scream vocals seriously. Yeah, like, I'm sorry. I mean, I mean like, I I understand like the reason why songs like this exist, but then you listen like I was listening to the lyrics on this song, and like he's literally talking about nothing. Like he was saying like I if I went to school and got a good job, life wouldn't be so hard. Like that that just seems so like I mean, substanceless to me. Like I, I I don't know. I mean, usually when when I'm listening to like vocal heavy songs, the lyrics should, you know, be something captivating, like telling some kind of story. And I think that if if it was if it felt less superficial, then maybe I would take this song a little more seriously. But like the song seems like it 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 seems like it's taking itself so seriously with just like this, you know, because it, it does achieve like feeling sad and everything, but the juxtaposition of like the base, like the baseless lyrics just turned me off completely. I, like, I'm I sorry. mean, I mean, you have to keep in mind that it is a demo. Like he just kind of oh, made this one night, I feel like, and he just put it out. And All right, really according to the about. YouTube title, it's a demo of a demo. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and and I, by the I, way, I, it sounds. I'm not surprised. I genuinely had didn't know that. I thought I was listening to a finished product. So that makes more sense because if he was just trying to scream to get the idea down, then by all means go ahead. But if that was like a final mm -hmm. version, I'm like, there's no emotion in the screaming. Yeah. I'm I'm happy you didn't go with like a weird distorted production route on this one. One hundred gex. Yeah, yeah. No. Cause a lot it's of his song, It definitely his, sounds um, like He's not just trying to follow a trend. Like it definitely sounds like he actually like wanted oh, to make something that sounded like this, which is right. something I respect. 
like a lot of his his first three mixtapes all the songs i really enjoyed were songs that like he either was passionately yelling but like the production was good like underscores and umaru had some good production on some of those mixtapes but then there were songs that like had the most grating distorted production and his vocals weren't good at all and that just kind of turned me off from some of his music which is just like personal opinion i know that people are gonna like like distorted production just because you know it's I'm different quirky. yeah but it, it's not for me but i i like this so, one a lot i'm excited to listen to sem- semi-automatic by the title i feel like it's gonna be less like uh less like a prom tune like this one sounded like less of a sad song um i'm feeling like i'm feeling like a low low seven um i might say like five and a half probably that god i feel bad for what i'm about to do but i'm gonna say three i i just can't get past the screaming vocals i i can't i'm sorry ben Trigger, five go down the list what's your oh, what's your it's favorite so, it's and so least easy. favorite and which ones would be playlist ads for you Aaron, start. You start us off. All right. Uh, favorite song, Circuit Hour, Hope. Easily the most like experimentative song, like the one that did the most. Um, and it was also it also happened to be the one that I thought was the most musically engaging. Uh, least favorite song. Uh, I, I I don't remember if this is consistent with my ratings, but pretty like looking at it again, pretty obviously the boss fight remix. I mean that was just garbage. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you guys for having me. Hopefully we can do this again. It was a pleasure. Benjamin. Never. Never coming back. All right. Well, uh, um, <laughs> favorite was definitely the Bad Boy remix because I had this uh, this dumb smile on my face the entire time I was listening to it. Least favorite, I think, is either the Boss Fight remix or the William Crooks demo. Again, Boss Fight remix because yikes, and the Crooks re- demo because I couldn't get past the screaming vocals. And uh, I don't think I have any playlist ads here because my playlist is just a very certain vibe and none of these songs uh, were to that vibe. So, yeah. All right. Um, mine, my favorite song uh, is pretty easily the Bad Boy remix. Um, playlist ads would probably be the Bad Boy remix. Maybe Hope if it if i listen to it more and it grows on me flare flare is up there too um my least favorite is new world with the system overload remix a close second yeah Yeah, so my favorite was also the bad boy remix um my least favorite was the boss fight remix very controversial opinion and i might i don't don't think i have any playlist ads on here the bad boy remix might grow on me though but that's it um so i did full disclosure i did miss half of snare skin all of Reaper, oh, yeah i missed i missed hope Will. rocks so unless that was a masterpiece yeah. but, um, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't don't worry but yeah so full disclosure i did miss a few songs so those the refract and william crooks i didn't hear at all i heard half of snare skin but from what i heard i would add i would say flair more kismet's probably my favorite i just really liked it Circuit Hour song is a very, very close second, and it could surpass it in the future. Least favorite, again, I'm going with the controversial pick of Snails and Virus Syndicate, System Overload, Boss Fight Remix. And Company. Oh, I forgot company. about Company, that's true. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's consistent with my ratings, like Aaron said, but that's my least favorite looking at the list. And yeah, really only Flair, Bad Boy Remix, and... Circuit Hour song. Those are the only three I'd add to my playlist. All right. Thank you guys for watching another episode three of Hideout Rundown. We'll be back next week with uh, another episode and another week of music. Leave your rankings, your ratings, your recommendations in the comments below, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.